Oh yeah, it's time. Rhythm games can take many different forms. Sometimes they're really creative minigame collections. Other times they'll have you simulating playing an instrument, and other times they're straightforward, just asking you to press the buttons to the beat. But it's decently rare for a rhythm game to be story-driven. Well, yeah, dumb little go-save-rhythm-land stories aren't too rare, but I mean like really story-driven, complete with strong characters, a plot with stakes, and an excellent weaving of the rhythm gameplay into the narrative. I can only think of a small handful of games that have done this, and my favorite of all of them is without a doubt Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure, released in 2012 exclusively for the 3DS. The game was co-developed by Sega and Zine. I know that the Wikipedia page says Sega just published it, but the credits of the game seem to list several major Sega employees as the main people behind it. And from what I can find out about Zine, they normally take a backseat assistant developer role, and this doesn't seem to be an exception to that. But yeah, regardless, Sega at least published this game, and I'm really surprised that you never hear about it anymore because of that. You would think Sega would have been interested in pushing it a bit harder after release. Well, that's the thing. From what I can tell, this game sold extremely poorly. It never got any kind of sequel or follow-up, really any mention after it initially released. Uh, it did get an iOS port, but from what I can find, that version was taken down years ago. And it's just a shame, because Rhythm Thief is a phenomenal game. My first memory of Rhythm Thief was downloading the demo when I was, like, 12, and it was the only demo I ever came remotely close to using up all my uses on. It included just four of the game's minigames, and I played them over and over. No plot needed. This demo was just four damn fun minigames with great music, and it completely sold me. I was in middle school at the time, so I had to ask my mom to help me find a copy, and it took us a while to track one down. Our only option ended up being Walmart ship to store, so after a few agonizing weeks, I finally got the full game. But could the full game live up to that demo? Well, let's find out. We follow Raphael, an unassuming kid living in Paris who's trying to find his father. Of course, though, Raphael is living a double life as Phantom R, the infamous Phantom Thief. After realizing that a bracelet in the Louvre bears the same emblem as a coin his father left him, he plots to steal it, just for the clues it may hold. Right off the bat, Raphael is super likable. He's smart, polite, and mild-mannered, and one of my favorite things is that so is Phantom R. Phantom R is not a villain, he's a gentleman thief, so he doesn't do anything out of malice or greed. He only steals things to use the clues that they contain, and then he returns them right after, and god, he's just so cool and I want to be him! After narrowly escaping capture by Inspector Vergier, the detective hot on his trail, Phantom R runs into Marie, a girl who's running from some weird guys in suits of armor called the Chevaliers Diaboliques. It's then revealed that they're being led by the resurrected Napoleon Bonaparte. He looks nothing like Napoleon Bonaparte, you know, neither from our many historical depictions, nor the beginning of the goddamn game, but yeah, sure, that's Napoleon. Why not? From here, it's a matter of solving the mystery of the emblem, which is also on Marie's violin, and helping the people of Paris, all while running from both the police and the resurrected Napoleon Bonaparte. To actually play the game, you'll walk around some beautiful Parisian environments, talk to a quirky cast of characters who are substantially uglier than our main cast, and tap every goddamn pixel of every screen in constant fear that you'll miss secrets. By now, there's a slight chance that some of you are thinking, hey, this looks a lot like Professor Layton. Yeah. I don't normally like saying, oh, it's this game, but with X, but it's literally the exact same formula. From the walking, to the talking, to the tapping, it's gonna feel very familiar. The only major difference is that instead of solving puzzles for literally everyone, you're gonna be getting roped into some kick-ass rhythm games. Oh yeah, obviously Rhythm Thief is a rhythm game at its core. From looting the Louvre, to escaping the Paris Roller Skate Brigade, to fighting the Chevaliers, these actions are all rhythm games, each complete with a unique song and control scheme. The closest thing that I can compare this to is Rhythm Heaven, or specifically Rhythm Heaven Fever, because you have 50 total mini-games, but a lot of those later ones are just harder or remixed versions of the earlier mini-games. There's still phenomenal variety though, and they all demonstrate high levels of creativity and style, you're definitely not going to have trouble finding your favorites to replay a million times. So, at the end of the day, just picture Rhythm Heaven, but the way you unlock the minigames is closer to how you unlock puzzles in Professor Layton. And regarding this game's soundtrack, it's amazing! I've been playing the soundtrack this whole video, and I don't think I've made a single video without at least one Rhythm Thief song in there. The game's soundtrack is just ludicrously good, both in and out of the minigames. But, the minigames are definitely where the soundtrack shines. 
Some of my favorite minigame tracks are Le Getaway, Charlie Takes the Field, and Throwdown with Alfred. But that's basically all I can show. There's 50 songs, and like 90% of them are perfect. We'd be here all day. And as a testament to the song's striking style and lasting power, one of them became a TikTok trend. A very cursed TikTok trend, but still a TikTok trend. So, uh, take that for what you will. The plot has a lot of lovely moments, too. The introduction of Charlie is one of my favorite cutscenes, as well as most later scenes with Charlie. Charlie's just great. So is Inspector Vergier, because even though he's introduced as an antagonist, you eventually see that all he really cares about is the safety of his city. You'll learn to love him, and it pays off with an awesome minigame where you get to play as him. The streets of Paris are under our protection. After him! What? Napoleon is a great villain, too. He's super menacing, and I really enjoyed listening to all of his cliché uh, villain speeches anytime he showed up. I don't want to spoil too much, but one of the absolute best minigames is an early fight with Napoleon. This is a phenomenal example of how the game weaves its rhythm minigames into the story and creates a perfect symbiosis between the two. The animation is badass, and the music and difficulty here are both the perfect level of intense. It all comes together to create an epic duel between Napoleon and Phantom R. And speaking of Phantom R, both him and Marie grow a lot over the course of the story. Yes, as individual characters, but also together. As they slowly discover more about who they are, they bond, and seeing their relationship deepen is great. And of course, this is again reinforced through several minigames where you get to see just how much they care for each other. Now as much as I love this game, it's definitely not perfect. Actually, it's got like a ton of problems? Seriously, I love this game, but it has got some issues. And some of them are things where it's, it's just baffling that they didn't fix them before it came out. For one, the rhythm game health bar slash grade system is awful and borderline broken. Some rhythm games have a health bar. That's fine. But Rhythm Thief bases your entire overall minigame score off of your health bar. At the very end! So if you hit every note perfect but you miss the last two notes, sorry, you gotta be. Meanwhile, if you mess up five times throughout the song but still manage to recover each time, well, congratulations, you got an A, despite getting a lower score. This is backwards. And furthermore, your grade is completely separate from your score. And the game only saves the grade that's associated with your high score. So if your high score involved you playing through the whole minigame perfectly, but then missing the last two notes, sorry, that's a B. And that's what saved your profile. And this is made even worse by the fact that you have to get all A's on every minigame to unlock the very last minigame. And speaking of every minigame, oh god, some of those minigames are awful. Not most of them, not, e not even many of them. It's only like four or five, but man, those four or five are rough. And, and not just like, nah, they're mediocre. No, they are borderline unplayable. Remember Throwdown with Alfred? It's a phenomenal song, yeah, but the motion controls that you need for the minigame are so unresponsive. Rhythm games need to feel precise, and these motion controls are anything but precise. It's like you're constantly fighting against the system, just trying to dodge, just let me dodge, and then you get a B because the minigame just refused to listen to you! And there's a harder version of this one at the end of the game. I mean, yeah, also it's a great song, but come on, man! Just give me button controls! And don't even get me started with Gone with the Wind, we do not speak of that one! The pacing isn't always perfect either, and I could understand people saying that 50 minigames maybe still isn't quite enough, but in my opinion, those are mostly nitpicks. Other than the health bar system and some of the minigames just being poop, it's a great game. It's super stylish, full of heart, and mostly really polished, and a single playthrough of it is just a really good time, and also the soundtrack is so good! So yeah, I would recommend this game. And if you're interested, buy it now! The only official way to buy it is on the 3DS eShop, which is being shut down soon, or by purchasing a secondhand physical copy off of eBay, and holy shit, those prices! Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure is a true treasure, an underrated gem, if you will. 
and it should not be missed by any rhythm game fan. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go get out of this suit. It's like a billion degrees in here. I can't believe I actually bought a fedora for this. Hey, of all the videos on YouTube, you somehow made it to mine and then actually watched the whole thing. So a uh, huge thank you for that. Uh, Rhythm Thief is one of the most important games to me probably ever, so it really means a lot that you listen to me gush about it. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one.